What catches talent acquisition's eye when looking at a resume is definitely a resume that is clean and concise. Other things that we look for are your name, your address, your phone number, and your email to be clearly visible at the top of your resume. Even though the world has turned into somewhat of a work from home virtual world, we still like to see our candidates' addresses up on top of the resume. We like to know where our people are for commuting purposes and just in general. So I do suggest keeping your address on your resume. So when it comes to summaries and objectives, your greener candidates are gonna wanna focus on that objective, which is basically gonna get, let the employer know what is their objective if they were to get hired. For some of the more senior candidates, we definitely enjoy a good professional summary. Give me a snapshot of what you've done in the past 10 years. Most hiring managers are looking for is someone with longevity, someone who has a proven track record of progression within one company and someone who's progressed throughout different roles in their career. Jumpiness on a resume can be a red flag for talent acquisition. Again, we like to see longevity. So if a candidate um, does not have a proven track record of being successful at one company for an extended period of time, that's normally a red flag for us as well. When referring to time at previous employers, be sure to list the month and the year, not just the year. When it comes to listing school on your resume, it's definitely a valuable piece of information you want to include. If it doesn't exactly correlate with the role you're applying for, my suggestion is to keep that on the end of your resume. The skill section of a resume is very specific. And when we talk about catering a resume, I think this is the area that needs to be catered. If you are applying for a position that does involve more technical skills, then you're gonna to wanna to include more programs that you've worked with, more ERM systems, more implementations you've been a part of. But if your role does not require that and your skills are more intangible skills, communication, interpersonal skills, that's where you wanna tailor that section of your resume. What you wanna make sure you don't do is falsify information on your resume just to match a job description. You wanna make sure that your skill set is true because as recruiters, what we're looking for is your skill set and your previous experience. When it comes to pictures on a resume, rule of thumb is don't include your picture on your resume. A great place to upload a headshot would be your LinkedIn profile, which we highly recommend. So when it comes to being creative and wanting to stand out, uh, the resume is not necessarily the place to do that. You wanna keep that clean, concise, and to the point. In your interview, however, that is the time to be creative, stand out, and make sure that that recruiter remembers you. So the last two things you definitely want to make sure you've done once you've completed your resume is make sure all pages are formatted exactly the same and you have proofread and grammar checked everything.